director and youth services manager at the Batavia Public Library. So I've seen some of you at the library before. So um, those of you who I don't know, I hope you come and visit us at the library sometime. But tonight, it's been our tradition to have a little story time at Celebration of Lights. And we're very happy to have some very great guest speakers, guest readers for us tonight. And they're people that you might see in our community and that help make Batavia a wonderful community. And our first reader tonight, who has the fire truck shirt on? Where's our fire truck guy? Oh, right there. Well, you know, our very first reader tonight is the Batavia Fire Chief. Chief Dyke is our very first fire, is our very first reader today, and he's going to read a story, oh, about Santa needs some help this year for Christmas. And let's see what kind of help that the Santa might get from the fire department. So let's give our fire chief a Hello, everybody. The fire department does help Santa every now and then. He, I, I think he came in the fire truck today, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah, we try our hardest to help him. So this is a book called A Small Christmas <coughs> by Wong Herbert Yee. Okay. In the middle of town, where buildings stand tall, there lives a little man called Fireman Small. The only fireman the side of the bay, he's getting ready for the holiday. Since no calls have come in, he's also free to help Mayor Mole find a Christmas tree. So this is Fireman Small right here. He's on top of his ladder and he's helping Mayor Mole. Mayor is out there, but it's not Mayor Mole. <laughs> On Beaver's tree farm, he grows pines big and tall, and some teeny tiny like firemen small. With a few mighty whacks, he chops a tree down and throws it on the truck and drives back to town. So you see, he cut down a, a Christmas tree and he put it on the back of the fire truck. That's and he's, really yeah, he's gonna take it back. The city is bustling with yuletide cheer. For stores, it's the busiest time of the year. Fireman Small waves to a holiday shopper as he straightens the Christmas tree topper. There are bundles of lights that need to get strung and boxes of ornaments waiting to be hung. So here's Fireman Small up there. He's at the top of his ladder and he's fixing the star at the top of the tree. And here he is later on with a whole bundle of lights. That looks like the lights at my house. The townsfolk hustle past small on the street. Some stop to sample a warm winter treat. Boys and girls climb onto Santa's lap. Moms and dads line up with presents to wrap. So here they are, there's Santa. He's got a bunch of little bunnies and rabbits and things like that. Yeah, I know he is kind of, yeah, I think he is a hippo, isn't he? And here's all the shoppers over here. They're all going shopping. The bunny is the elf. Soon it's time for shopkeepers to leave since stores all close early on Christmas Eve. Fireman Small puts up the last decoration. Tired and beat, he drives back to the station. So here's all the, the shopkeepers locking their doors and getting ready to go home for Christmas. And here's, here's some of the Christmas decorations that are out there. Mm -hmm. It looks like a real Santa there. It might be. He pulls the truck into Firehouse 9, walks upstairs one step at a time, closes the curtains and gets into bed, and pulls the covers over his head. Around midnight, he hears a sound on the roof, a jingle of sleigh bells, a tip-tap of hoof. There's a crash, a muffled ho-ho-ho. Someone's downstairs in the firehouse below. So here, here he, drove, he backed his fire truck back into the station there. And now, and now it's it's snowy outside, and you heard a crash down below. I don't know what it is. Quickly out of bed, he scoots, jumps into his pants and boots. 
Ready to go, he slides down the pole, sees two legs sticking out of the coal. They used to have a coal box back then. Black boots, a brown sack, white bearded jaws. Is it a burglar? Why, it's Santa Claus. From the cap on his, on his head right down to each foot, the jolly old fellow is covered in soot. So soot is what happens when you get all covered in, in black coal kind of a thing. So Santa Claus came, but he fell in the coal box downstairs. And here's Fireman Small. He slides down the, uh, the pole to, to find him. His clothes get tossed in the wash machine in just a short while. They're clean and they're dry and clean. Uh-oh, something's wrong. The red suit has shrunk. Worse than that, Santa's asleep in his bunk. What about all the good girls and boys? Who will deliver the rest of the toys? So here is Fireman Small. He put all the clothes into the wash machine, but now they shrunk and now they're teeny tiny little clothes. And here's the bag of toys and he finds Santa sleeping in his bunk. Though Fireman Small should be snuggled in bed, he races up to the rooftop instead. Dressed in Santa's suit, he hops into the sleigh, but the reindeer refused to fly away. So here he is, he runs up the stairs with the toys. He finds the reindeers on the roof, but the reindeers won't fly away. What can he do now, such terrible luck? Wait! Fireman Small can take the fire truck. Out of the station, he's ready to go, plowing through streets all covered with snow. Fireman Small clutches the sack full of toys, and he slides down the chimney without any noise. So he gets into the fire truck since the reindeer won't go. And look, at there he is driving the fire truck, and he's got the bag of toys right behind him. And he climbs up his ladder up to the chimney to go down. He's going, the police are going to think that he's so present from Santa. Well, I think Santa fell asleep, so he um, kept trying to help Santa, I, I have think. a question. Hmm? I got kind of confused because I don't know how he started the engine because there was no keys, probably. Oh, well, I, it's pretty, I, he, he knows how to start the engine, I think. <laughs> At Farmer Pig's Farm, he leaves a straw hat, new overalls, and a chew toy for Cat. Beaver's gift is his own ping-pong paddle. Rabbit gets a rocking horse and a saddle. Up the chimney he scoots in a hurry. Down the rooftop he shoots with a flurry. So here's some of the toys that he gave to different people. Straw hat, rocking horse, and here he is up on the roof, sliding down the roof. You can be on that rocking horse. Fireman Small speeds along to the next house, dropping off presents for Possum and Mouse. He stuffs a stocking for Crocodile's daughter, makes sure the Christmas tree has enough water. That's pretty nice. Fireman Small crosses each name off the list. The bag is empty. No one has been missed. So he put all the presents under everybody's tree, and he's, died, and he's gone to everybody's house. He pulls back into station number nine, walks upstairs one step at a time, stretches and yawns, crawls into bed, and pulls the covers over his head. So here, look, he pulled the fire truck back into the fire station, and he climbs into bed with Santa. All that mess. When Fireman Small gets up on Christmas Day, he finds no Santa, no reindeer, no sleigh. Was it a dream? Did I imagine it all? He Look, left. there's a letter for Fireman Small. He so left. he went up to the roof, and there, all the reindeers are gone, the sleigh is gone, Santa's gone, but there's a letter there for him. He I know. And the letter says, After flying all night, north, south, east, and west, my reindeer and I were in need of some rest. Thank you, Fireman Small. You're a fine substitute. Please keep this token, my now tiny red suit. So he left his little red suit for Fireman Small. Yay. 
Well, thank you for listening, everybody. I hope everybody has a very nice Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Well, Fireman Small certainly was helpful, wasn't he? Our next reader, and it's one of our police officers from the Savia. It's Officer Liz Webb, and let's give Officer Webb a round of applause. And guys, I'm going to have you sit down so everybody behind you can see the story that our officer is reading. Hi, everyone. How are you today? Good. All right. This is called Grumpy Badger's Christmas. Oh, I have something like that, but it's with a mitten. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You too? Yeah. All right. It was almost Christmas, and the forest was a flurry of activity. The animals were bustling here and there, putting up the Christmas tree, wrapping presents, making tasty cakes and cookies, while the young ones scampered about, squealing with excitement. Everyone was looking forward to Christmas. Well, almost everybody. Grumpy. Grumpy Badger looked out his window and scowled. Merry Christmas, shouted Squirrel. Merry Christmas? Bah, he saw in the back. What piffle. I am a sensible creature, and I sleep all through the cold winter. Now I am going to bed until the spring, and if anyone wakes me, I shall be very, very grumpy. And with that, he pulled his window shut with a clunk. <laughs> Grumpy Badger knew he would be hungry when he woke, so he checked his pantry. There were pies and pastries, hams and cheeses, crispy crackers, jars of fruit, and sticky sweet jams. That should do, he said. Then he filled his hot water bottle and climbed into bed. He had just closed his eyes when there was a knock at the door. Knock, knock, knock! Knock, knock, knock! knock, knock. Bah, puffed the Grumpy Badger, climbing into bed. I skipped the page. It was Mole. M -m Merry Christmas, Mr. Badger, he said timidly. I'm sorry to bother you. I've been trying to put lights on the Christmas tree, but it's just too big. Can I please borrow your ladder? Christmas tree, spluttered Grumpy Badger. Piffle and double piffle. Christmas is for sleeping, and that's what I'm trying to do. And he closed the door with a bang. Ah, huff, grumpy badger climbing into bed. Borrow my ladder He's indeed. All I want is a bit of He's peace and quiet, so leave me alone. He peeked under his bed where he put more food for springtime. Candies and cornbread and cherry cupcakes. Then he cuddled deep into his big warm comforter. He was just starting to snore when there was another <coughs> knock at the door. Knock, knock, knock. 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 Good job. <coughs> This time it was Squirrel. Hello, Badger, he said cheerily. I brought you a Christmas present. Christmas present, snorted Grumpy Badger. Piffle and triple piffle. I don't like presents, and I don't like Christmas. All I want is a little piece. And he shut the door with a crash. 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 Now, Grumpy Badger was really grumpy. To cheer himself up, he thought about the bottles and bottles of homemade lemonade he had in the cellar. Then he lay down and closed his eyes, but he couldn't sleep. His head felt a little chilly. And suddenly there was a loud banging at the door. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, what is it now, Grumpy Badger sighed. He was about as tired and grumpy as a badger can be. Oh, Badger, panted Rabbit. Help, it's poor Mole. He's stuck at the top of the Christmas tree. Come quickly. Piffle, shouted Gr Grumpy Badger, and triple piffle on top of that. Why can't everyone just leave me alone? Okay. And he slammed the door so hard that the whole house shook. Slam. Yeah. <laughs> at long last, Grumpy Badger fell asleep. But soon he was tossing and turning and wriggling and squirming. He was dreaming of Mole, dangling by one tiny paw from the top of an enormous Christmas tree. Mole was trembling. Mole was about to fall. Ah. No, screamed Grumpy Badger, sitting bolt upright and suddenly wide awake. What have I done? He jumped out of bed, grabbed his ladder, and dashed into the street. 
Grumpy Badger raced up to the Christmas tree. Hold on, Mole, he cried. He scrambled up the ladder, scooped Mole gently into his arms, then he helped him down to the ground. I'm sorry I left you hanging, mumbled Grumpy Badger. I suppose I've been a bit of a grump. That's okay, said Squirrel, and he gave Badger back his Christmas present, a soft, fluffy nightcap. I've been so grouchy, said Grumpy Badger. What can I do to make things better? And then he knew. Have a Christmas party. You're right. Badger's Christmas party was the best ever. There were pies and pastries, cheeses and ham, and sticky sweet jams, cookies and cupcakes, and bottles and bottles of homemade lemonade. Uh, I think it's good for my Yay! They jigged and jived and joked and laughed late into the night. <coughs> Merry Christmas, everybody, Badger cried. And if you don't all come to my party next year, I shall be very grumpy indeed. The end. Merry Christmas, everyone. Instead of sleep, he said potty. You're right, then he did. Next, I think potty will be sleep, then sleep will be potty, then sleep, potty, sleep, potty. I think you're right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. So Grumpy Badger really didn't want to celebrate Christmas with all of his friends, did he? Well, he just wanted to sleep. But, but a party was okay, wasn't he? When he finally had it with all of his friends. Well, our next guest tonight is somebody I know from the library, and she's one of our library trustees, and she's going to read a pretty new book that we have, and it's about a Christmas tree. Hmm. That somebody's not real happy about. Let's see what it has. I'm going to invite Kate Garrett in from the Batavia Public Library Board of Trustees. You guys got comfy. That's good. So my name's Kate, and I'm going to read you guys a book called Red and Lulu. What do you think this book is about? Oh, I, I it's about a Christmas tree. There's a big Christmas tree and two birdies. I, oh, I, I had that book. You've read this book before. Do you know what kind of birds these are? Red robins. Red robins. They're not robins. Rabbit. Who knows? Red boy. What are they? They're cardinals. Yeah. And there's a cardinal that's bright, bright red, and a cardinal that's a little bit brown. This um, is the girl cardinal. Her name is Lulu, a female. Um, male. And this is the male cardinal. His name is? Red. 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 Two twins and a Christmas tree. Let's find out. I think it's winter because I think I read this one. Definitely winter. Red and Lulu by Matt Cavries, Candle Wick. Red and Lulu were happy in their tree. Lulu, hiding in the tree. One more time. Their nests were always safe in its branches. Its shade. You don't see them, they're hiding. Their nests were always safe in its branches. Its shade kept them cool on hot summer days. And its evergreen needles kept them cozy when autumn winds howled. It was the perfect place to live all year long. I know why the boys aren't going to be happy about the Christmas tree. Why? Because it's going to be their tree. <laughs> but their favorite time of year by far was Christmas winter. The family would decorate the tree with lights and sometimes people would gather near and sing, Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree. My Christmas tree is really loud. It's like, oh Christmas tree, but way loud. It sings that all the time. Thy leaves are so unchanging. Red and Lulu loved listening to the people sing about their tree. Sometimes they even sang along. That one looks mad because it's actually not mad. That not mad? Why does he look mad? Uh, that, they look like it all the time. They, they have different eyebrows than us. Just angry birds. All the time. Angry birds. <laughs> one chilly morning, just as the cold months were starting again, Red went out to find some breakfast. Lulu stayed behind, tucked in the branches of their tree. Here's their tree. 
And there's their family. And, and this little boy is waving. What's he waving to? It's a truck. Look at a bird. He's I... waving to the truck. Wait, maybe the, the truck. bird. Maybe the bird too? Buddy. Bye, bird. He has to look at his face. He... Oh. There's no words on this page. What's going on? What? Yeah. They're taking it delivered in another house. They're taking it down. They're taking it down. They're taking the Christmas tree Who's down. this one? That's uh, Lulu. The female. That's the female. That's Lulu. Where's she going? Oh, in, to hide. She's going to hide. Uh -huh. But uh-oh. Uh -huh. The tree is going on the truck. I think I know something. What do you think? Maybe <laughs> that's the wood from the tree. It's the wood from the tree. She's hiding inside the wood from the tree. Yeah. She's safe in there, but what's going to happen when She's the rest gets get, back? She's going to get cut up. She's going to get cut up? Oh, gosh, I hope not. Next what? page. No, she's going to get um, delivered. She's going to get delivered. Let's find out. When uh, Red returned, he could not believe what he saw. Their tree had moved. It was on its side, strapped to the back of a big truck. Red could hear the sweet sound of Lulu's song coming from inside the tree. And then the truck <laughs> drove away. Birds are sort of faster than trucks. Are Birds are faster True, than trucks? They go trucks? to south. I hope so. They're faster. Red chirped frantically, telling Lulu to stay right where she was, telling her that he would be right there. There goes the truck. There's little tiny Red. So little. I don't see it. Um, Ew. It's hard to see back there. Huh? He's so small. Yeah, he's, he's got a big way to go. That tree's getting on the highway. You see it? You see it? Yellow! There's a tree. We can keep our eyes on the tree and red. I see red. You guys see the tree? Yeah. Oh, there's the tree. Yes, it's way Oh more. my gosh, it's really far it's away from red. No, it's actually not far Just away. skate on those buds. Yeah. Oh, could he skate on them? That'd be good. Red flew as hard as he could for as long as he could, but the truck was just too fast. Wait, guys. Before long, Red lost sight of the tree. Uh, I think it's over there. I think it's over here somewhere. I can't see it. You Wait, see Red? I think I see it. That's a big city. Okay, guys, sit down so everybody behind it. you can see too, okay? You see it? Still, he kept flying, Where? trying to catch up. Oh, I see Soon, it. he found himself in a strange place unlike any place he had ever seen. City. Mm. That's Chicago. Oh, you see some things. I know this, that's like at the front of the Batavia Public Library. It's in front of a, it's in front of. It's kind of like the zoo wait. lion. It's kind of like the zoo lion? I think yeah, it's the Art a... Institute has lions Oh, like this, yeah, it? I, that's right in front of the Art Institute. And then she found pigeons. And there's some other birds. <laughs> she found some pigeons. <laughs> For days, Red searched everywhere. He was tired <coughs> and hungry. He wondered if he would ever see Lulu Wonder. again. Would he eat the way? He could eat the breadcrumbs? He, yeah. he was supposed to go that way. Okay. Sit down over there, okay? You did a great job listening. He looks lonely. And All by and himself. <coughs> Big city. Oh, and if butterflies yeah. or bees get hit with snow or uh, Rain, they fall. There's a lot of people there. Oh, uh, actually, that's, that's red. True. Snow reminded him of Lulu. He missed her so much, he could almost hear the song they loved. That's red. What's the song they love? Uh, oh, Christmas oh, tree, oh, Christmas tree. Thy leaves are so unchanging. Oh, I should have read that. I didn't even see it. Wait, he could hear the song. Red flew toward the sound. The voices grew louder and louder. Then he turned the corner. Oh, looking behind the corner. What's behind the corner? The truck. <gasps> they had dun, 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 dun. Yep, not oh, the tree. Yep, not the tree. I just know the tree. It's on the cover. Tree. Red's over here. Lulu's it's over there. It's a Christmas tree. Maybe he's getting close. I don't Christmas think that's tree. the Christmas tree. Red chirped Christmas with glee and soared over the singing crowd. What does soar mean? Ow. Yeah, it's a Christmas tree. Ow. Glide. Ow. Glide. Mm. <gasps> Color. Okay, everybody sit down. Sit down. You guys are doing so good. He flew right to their favorite branch. He's got his mouth open. He's chirping for her. Bruh. Mm. There she is. Oh. 
turns around and he looks and he doesn't see her. <gasps> Can you guys read that one? Lulu. 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 Oh, so cool. Bright, shiny Christmas lights. Ow. Oh, stop. Red and Lulu were happy in their tree and watched with pride as hundreds of thousands of people marveled the at The tree is falling again. Oh yeah, what's happening here? Oh, again. Wow. They're taking it back. The tree is falling again. No, but then one day, tree. workers came and took their tree away again. So where are they? They're right there. They're flying out of the tree. If you remove this, this rhymes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> day and away. Yeah. This time, Red and Lulu stayed. Got their new tree. They built a nest in their new tree. Splashing in the bird bath. What do those pigeons think? They found a new place to make a home in a park surrounded by trees and grass and lots of I'll, friends. They should have run in the board. Christmas tree! Oh, another one! Now every year when the air turns Christmas. cold, Red and Lulu take a special trip. And when the crowd comes to sing, they sit together, Red. snuggle close on a snowy Lulu. branch and listen. To what? Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Red, 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 red. Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. The leaves are so unchanging. Sometimes red. they even sing along. Good. Thank you guys for listening. I love this. Well, thank you very much. So that was interesting about a Christmas tree. If you went downtown Chicago, you might see a big Christmas tree. We have a big Christmas tree here in Batavia. But I, 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 I have there. a Christmas tree on my own. That's cool. Well, I'm going to have you guys just back up a little bit because we're getting kind of close to our reader. And, and I'm going to have everybody sit on their bottom so the people behind can see very well. Okay? So our next reader is someone who comes to us from the Park District. I've read this. And her name is Allison Niemel. She is our executive director at the Batavia Park District. So I don't know let's what I read this. It's not the gingerbread man. Hello, everybody. I read this book. It's a tough cookie is a story about how every single one of us has something special to offer and how what makes us unique is what makes us so special. So what are, what are some things that you have that are special? Anybody want to share? Uh, my Nintendo Switch. <laughs> what was that? My Nintendo Switch. A Nintendo Switch. <laughs> but what's special about you as a person? Oh. Funny, very smart. Yeah, yeah I am smart. <laughs> yeah? That's special. He's actually a genius. He's a genius? <laughs> All right, so we're going to learn about the tough cookie and what makes the tough cookie so special. Why is there heart? Hmm? Once upon a time, while Fox was visiting Christmas Town in the land of holiday trees, a little cookie, still warm from the bakery oven, burst out the front door and shouted, I'm a sweet cookie. Well, hello to you. And since you brought it, since you brought it up, you do look sweet. Oh, that scared me. Of course I'm sweet and fast. Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the sugar cookie man. Sugar cookie. <laughs> Instead of gingerbread man, sugar cookie. Fox never could resist a challenge. So he gave chase, shouting back. You look very sweet, sweet enough to eat. Ha ha, just try to eat me. Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the sugar cookie man. Hey, Fox was pretty fast. And he loved sweets. Crunch. But Cookie wasn't all that sweet. And Fox spit him right out. Blah. You taste awful. Stop. How dare you? I'm a sugar cookie. I taste wonderful. How many of you like sugar cookies? Mm, Santa mm -hmm. likes sugar cookies. Yeah, Santa said to make some sugar cookies for him at Christmas. See? The cookie cried. Sorry to break it to you, my little friend, but you taste terrible. 
Plus, I think I just broke my tooth. You are one tough cookie. But I'm sweet. Um, no, you're not. But if I'm not a sweet cookie, then what am I? A slow poke who tastes terrible. Now what do I do? <laughs> there, there, don't cry. Hmm, maybe you just need some sweetening up. You think so? It's worth a try. Yeah. So after a quick trip to the dentist to get his tooth fixed, Fox took Cookie to the Christmas Town Spa, where the elves dipped him in delicious eggnog, sprinkled him with powdered sugar, and sang him sugary sweet Christmas carols. He's getting hungry now. <laughs> Fox gave him a lick, but Cookie still tasted terrible. Hmm. You said you were a slow pup, but maybe we should work on your running instead. So Fox signed up Cookie for the sweet treat Christmas race the very afternoon, and they headed for the park. But Cookie's stubby legs and lack of experience made it impossible it's, for him to keep Christmas up. It's a Christmas tree. It is a Christmas tree. And Cookie just couldn't keep up with the more seasoned runners. And as hard as he tried. Run, run, as fast as you can, Cookie, shouted Fox. He came in last place. Cookie was exhausted, and he didn't feel so tough. Was he cut out for anything? Uh -huh. <laughs> Fox thought so. Every treat in Christmas Town should be able to build itself a paper or a proper gingerbread house. You can too, and I'll help. Okay. So they found a nice little spot in the gated community of Cookie Cutter and got to work building and decorating. But when they were finished and Cookie went inside his beautiful new home, crash! It didn't exactly hold up. And that's when Cookie crumbled. I'm not sweet. I'm not fast. I can't even make a gingerbread house. Everything I do is half-baked. <laughs> Don't give up, my little cookie. We'll figure this out. You've got to hang in there. Well, why not hang with us? You've been looking forward, we've been looking forward to meeting you all day. Huh? Said cookie. Why is there a sock? Uh, I think these are ornaments. These are Christmas ornaments. See? There, there is a sock. Yep, you're right, a stocking. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you say? It makes perfect sense, <coughs> seeing as we're all Christmas ornaments. And you are, too. I am? Said Cookie. <laughs> of course you are, silly. You're not like the other cookies. You're special. Baked with glue and lots of salt. With a little nice. hole in your head for a ribbon. So that's what that's for, said Cookie. I should have guessed, said Fox. Cookie finally knew what he was made of, and he couldn't have been happier. That afternoon, he hung with the care from a branch on the biggest Christmas tree in the center of the park, with the sweetest view in town. Overjoyed, Cookie shouted for all the world to hear, Look! Look at me! You can't reach me! I'm an ornament on a tree! <laughs> Make some room up there for me, Cookie! Said Fox. Fox never could resist the challenge. The end. The end. <laughs> 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 Well, we have two more stories. Thank you very Thank much, you. and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We have two more stories, and we hope, and then you get a chance to be on our little video today, too. But our next story is from a special friend of ours in Batavia, from the president of our Batavia Mothers Club, and her name is Maura Hirschhauser. So let's give her a nice round of applause. This one's about the Christmas tree. It's literally... Yes. The book I'm going to read today is called The Last Christmas Tree, and it's a pretty cute story. I think you're going to like it. Almost exactly one month before Christmas, 
on a day like today, it's almost exactly one month before Christmas, the trees arrived for the holiday. On the day before, the lot had been empty, but now it was full to bursting. The difference was almost like magic. There were balsam firs, spruces and pines, all lined up neatly at a slight tilt. I, see, I think I might see the last Christmas tree. You might see it. In the middle of one row, wedged between two bushier companions, one particular tree trembled with excitement. It was not yet very tall, and in truth, a bit hunched over. We found it, not to mention the branches that were missing here and there. Still, no tree was more filled with the spirit of the season. Surely everyone would see that at once. You see the littlest Christmas tree? Yeah. The little tree could hardly wait to get picked. What a moment that would be. It imagined itself covered with lights and ornaments with presents tucked in snugly underneath. You see that little Christmas tree? The other trees didn't seem to care about who picked them out or how long it took, but the little tree kept its hope high. It wanted someone special, someone who was excited about Christmas as it was. A lot of trees are leaving the lot. As the days passed, the trees were sold one by one. A few people made up their minds in an instant. They knew what they wanted, and that was that. Others went back and forth and back and forth for what seemed like hours, and sometimes it was. As time went on, the remaining trees were spread out, the better to show themselves off. No longer hemmed in, the little tree tried to stand up straight and puff itself out as much as possible, but nobody seemed to notice. He's trying pretty hard. The lot got emptier and emptier. The few unsold trees found their prices marked down again and again and again. How does that little tree look? Kind of sad. I wanted this one before. You did? <laughs> On Christmas Eve, the little tree looked to the left and looked to the right. It was all alone. A sign was hung on its big with big letters. It wasn't an ornament, not really, but the tree chose to think otherwise. Does anyone know what that says? Free. Maggie, it says free. <laughs> free! <gasps> I think something good is about to happen. The night was yeah. cold and clear, and the little tree got rather sleepy. Just before dawn, it thought it heard a jingling sound. I know. What could it be? But it was hard to be sure. Jingle, 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 jingle. Who do you think it is? I was white. <laughs> the next thing the tree knew, it was gently picked up and placed in an empty sack. This wasn't what the tree had expected at all. Then the earth fell away. Far below, the other trees were covered in all of their finery. The little tree had no idea where it was going or how long the journey would take. I wonder... I wonder. But when it arrived at last, the little Christmas tree was finally home. Who's the tree home with? Santa. The end. Thank you very much. Well, we have one more story, and then we're going to ask you all to come up front for a little treat. And it's Mayor and Mrs. Shoki reads one of our favorite stories. It has become our tradition that they end celebration of lights with one of our favorite tales. Thank you. Thank you. How many of you know the night before Christmas? Okay. <laughs> Good. Children of all ages. Excellent. <laughs> we love reading this. This is um, one of our favorite stories, too. Okay. Mayor, shall you start? The pictures are really good. Do you want to slide up maybe just a little bit? Because the pictures in this book are wonderful. The Night Before Christmas by C. Clement Moore. So to, to, was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there.
children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eye should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his courses they flew, and, with, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. I could say this part with me if you know it. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they met with an obstacle, mounted to, mount to the sky. So up on the housetop, the courses they flew with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes how they twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a... Cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. <clears throat> the stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. And he had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and he filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Oh, good story. Thank you. Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry I'd like to invite you up to, and if you would like to grab some bells and stand around Mayor and Mrs. Shilke, and we're going to sing We Wish You a Merry Christmas to everybody on BATV. Would you like to grab some bells and come on up? Come on, stand here by Mayor and Mrs. Come on, then stand, stand right here. Would you like to come up, honey? How about that? And come on up. We need some sandwich. We still have we still have a couple of our guest readers. So why don't we have our guest readers yeah. come on up? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you need to be in there. Yeah. What is? You can be in as well. Do you want some bell? Okay. 
Okay, we're going to sing Can I have some bells? Oh, I'm sorry. Come on. Got to have some bells here. Got to have some bells. Okay, if we all need some bells. Okay. You guys want to come back here and get the bells? We're going to sing We Wish You a Merry Christmas. We're going to sing twice. We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Two times. You guys want to grab some bells and go sing with everybody else? Are we doing the verse or just the We Wish You? Well, just sing We Wish You. Okay. We'll sing We Wish You. Twice. Okay. Okay. Come on, Reese. Okay. Everybody want to sing? Ready? Ready? Sing. Ready? Sing. Ready? 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 Ready?